the US cover-up of the perpetrators of Unit 731, also known as the Asian Auschwitz. So what what US what Unit 731 was was that was one of the many units the Japanese had in China because they'd invaded China, specifically in uh, what was it called Manchuria, which was a Japanese puppet state. Okay, and that's in that's now northeast China, but they'd claimed it as their own, and it was what they were doing there is by the Japs were doing biological warfare research and they had this facility, the most infamous is Unit 731. And although this is less reported than Joseph Mengele and, and other Nazi, cruel Nazi doctors' medical research at Auschwitz and throughout the rest of the Holocaust, many have compared the hideous medical experiments at Unit 731 to the Nazis' experiments during the Holocaust, and again, it's been this is this part of World War II has been barely barely reported. The focus is more on the Nazis, but the bar, I'm, I've, I must admit I've studied what the Nazis did quite extensively, and that's as that's as horrific and can. Get, that can make you cry looking at those pictures and studying all that. But I must admit, this Japanese medical research really makes my stomach churn. I can't. I have to. I have to research it in small doses. It's absolutely horrific what they did to them. I won't even bring up a lot of the experiments they did. But let's just just picture the worst sort of human experimentation you can imagine. Then times that by about ten, and you've got Unit Seven Three One. So the conspiracy here is not that the Japanese did this. Okay, what it is is that it's the way that the U.S. handled this after World War II. So similar to there's there's real parallels here with Operation Paperclip. So the many of the worst Nazi scientists who did all sorts of horrific experiments in World War II were protected and brought into America and never never faced prosecution in the Nuremberg Nuremberg trials. Right. So similarly here, what actually happened? Declassified documents have revealed that after the war ended, a large scale collaboration occurred between America and the scientists of Unit 731. Uh, and what's, what's worse is that the insidious Japanese research became the basis for many US military operations. So like the Nazi research and the Nazi scientists, N Nazi science, I should say, sim in similar way that the US military and the powers that be at the time, post-World War II in the States, they wanted whatever that, that Japanese research was, and they were prepared to protect these war criminals and these people that, you know, in, in Japan, in China, under the Japanese occupation, millions died, and they did all sorts of experiments, from one-on-one -on -one human experimentation to spraying entire cities, to poisoning water supplies, all sorts of stuff. Yet we protect, or we as in the West, or the Allied Nations, and in this case specifically, America protected these people because we wanted their research. Um, and the worst, the, the worst doctor was General Ishii. He was in charge of Unit Seven Three One, and he's the equivalent of Joseph Mengele. And the he and the all the other Japanese scientists involved in Un Unit 731 were never tried for war crimes by the US or by any other allied nation. But what gets fascinating is a US intelligence cable advised the War Department that the Japanese scientists, headed by Ishii, and I'm quoting here now, headed by Ishii, did violate the rules of land warfare. But this expression of opinion is not a recommendation that the group be char charged and tried as such. So think about that. The war, war department are admitting there's war crimes here, but they're saying do not, they're saying it subtly, but they're saying do not charge them, do not try them. Now, for, but it gets, the, the evidence of a conspiracy here gets way more documented. So further evidence of the US 
intentions as evidenced by the actions of General Douglas MacArthur. So while serving as Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces, MacArthur wrote to Washington DC on May 6, 1947 as follows, and I quote, statements from Ishii probably can be obtained by informing Japanese involved that information will be retained in intelligence channels and will not be employed as war crimes evidence. So you've got there one of Ishii, one of the worst war criminals of World War II, and you've got a war, you've got an American war hero, General Douglas, Douglas MacArthur, saying you can you can obtain it if you tell them they will not be prosecuted. Nice stuff, real nice. And the, and what's interesting is MacArthur was one of the ones who orchestrated a deal with the scientists of Unit Seven Three One in exchange for all their biological warfare research. And they and the part of that deal was they would be granted these scientists would be granted complete immunity from prosecutions. And they and so they avoided the Tokyo war crimes trials, just as and the Tokyo war crimes trials was the equivalent of Nuremberg. So it's just the same as the Nazi scientists not being sent to the Nuremberg trials. Same sort of thing, but you're dealing with Japan. And, the, and I should add also that the Soviets actually had, they had deals with the Japanese too. And they actually confiscated, doc, confiscated documents and created exact replicas of the Unit 731 facility in the Soviet Union in a part that's now part of Ukraine in a closed off military town and God knows what sort of experiments they were doing there. And there's also, now I'm going off fact, I'll clearly differentiate there. There's, there is suspicion that the US military's covert uh, biological warfare operations since World War II, including the Vietnam War's Operation Ranch Hand, where they were spraying entire forests with germ warfare. There's suspicions that a lot of this is related or inspired by Unit 731, including even some say the Gulf War Syndrome might be directly related to that. And I believe Agent Orange and whatever they were doing with that was directly relates to the research they got on Unit 731. So anyway, getting back to the factual and proven elements of this Unit 731 conspiracy, the public finally learned about this dreadful secret in 1993. So that's almost what? Almost, that's 48 years after the war ended. And this was in... This was at the time in 1993, US Defense Secretary William Perry finally declassified army and intelligence records relating to the Japanese human experimentation during World War II. So I would, for people who are interested in pa Operation Paperclip and how the hell we in the West could have been associating with serious Nazis after World War II, I would implore people to study Unit 731 as well, because there's real parallels there in it, and it kind of opens up a wider picture as to what the goals could be.